Shalom, brother and sister truth seekers. Here's another update on the Covenant Calendar Club Sundial Project. I am collecting all the photos to this Facebook group, and if you check the link in the description below this video, you'll uh, be able to access a folder where I'm saving all the uh, pictures of Sundial data by date. And here's uh, the update for it day or this past week so i wanted to talk about this image again real quick uh you know so when we're doing the straight line sundial method you can see that you've you've got an object like a nail or something sticking out of a board and the sun is going to make the shadow the tip of the shadow of that nail move on your recording surface and if you record at different points during the day you're going to see these different curves. And uh, <clears throat> the straight line is what we're looking for. And from the years that I've been doing this, there's definitely a distinct day where you see this, you see one of these curves progressing towards the straight line. Every day it'll get a little straighter and a little closer to the middle there until it eventually straightens out. And there will be one single day where the line straightens out. And then the next day it will the pattern will flip and you'll see the opposite facing curve. And so it's, it's a very unique day when the sun rises, um, like perfectly due east and, and sets perfectly due west. I guess uh, that's with, with respect if you live at exactly at the equator, but it's, it's, uh, to help you understand what's actually happening. I wanted to mention this picture if you're not familiar, you can Google these. These are called star trails. And what this is, is someone took like a time-lapse photo uh, at night. Like uh, they've got a camera that's taking a picture like every five seconds or 10 seconds, it takes a picture. And so you can see the trail of the stars as they move across the night sky. And this is a very unique picture because uh, you're able to see the same patterns that you see on this board in the previous picture. So if you look closely, you got the straight line down the middle, and then you got curve on one side, curve on the other side, and the sun, depending on what time of year it is, is going to make that shadow pattern on your board. And this is why. Because it's following these paths in heaven. And um, this is a very unique location where this picture was taken. It's the um, near the equator. And that line, the straight line that you see, has a name. It's called the Celestial Equator. And that is the line that the sun travels on during an equinox event. And it cuts that perfect line, shadow line, across your board. And so, actually, it's really unique. Um, if you try Googling these, most times you'll only see, like, a, a circle. Like, the, if you look to the right, you can see a pretty clear circle pattern there. And if you look to the left, you can see it's another circle the other way. The picture wasn't big enough to, to show you what that circle all the way over there. But this is something you only see near the equator. If you live far north or far south, you're actually... I think you're only going to see one circle. You won't see that middle line. Uh, so it's a sp this special picture. But it, 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 the, regardless, um, the sun is traveling these paths. Don't ask me how. But <laughs> this is what the sun is doing. It's jumping in these tracks, almost like a DVD uh, or an old record or something. And it kind of every day it's progressing a little closer to that center line of heaven, and then it crosses it, and it goes to the other uh, other side. And so the interesting thing, just to keep in mind, is this day when the sun rides on the celestial equator, it's really unique because modern science will try to tell you that the sun is just, it's progressing, uh, you know, from one side to the other, of this straight line over the course of the year and when it crosses the celestial equator that happens in a moment of time but if that was true then when you were doing collecting your straight line data or trying to you wouldn't actually see a straight line you would see a curve and then when it crossed over that line it would it would immediately turn into the other curve and you would see like an s pattern 
you wouldn't actually see the straight line. So it's interesting and just something to keep in mind uh, about what modern science says. And you can, you can prove this for yourself, but when you collect sundial data, there will be, uh, for the equinox events, you will see the sun rising and following this celestial equator path perfectly. Um, and so that that's what's happening with these patterns. And... Uh, yeah, I just I just want to mention that. So uh, this this week there's uh, oh, look at that we've only got like six weeks left to practice. And we only had one person practicing this week, but and and that kind of put on my heart. Uh, you know, it kind of reminds me of the. Uh, well, I I just felt led to share that it reminds me of of like the ten virgins, and this stuff is not complicated. I suppose having oil in your lamp is not complicated either, but it's something you don't want to put off until the last minute. You do want to make sure you're getting in, you're practicing ahead of time so you're ready to go when the important events are here to confirm the Creator's times. Because uh, if you do wait till the last minute, uh, you might run into little bugs and stuff, and that's, so that's why it's good to practice. It's not complicated, but there are... There are a few things that uh, can go wrong, and and it's easy to avoid with just a little bit of practice. So, uh, more practice, more learning. So this is coming from New Zealand, and this is uh, the Covenant Calendar Club's youngest shadow marker, uh, Asher, eight years old in New Zealand, and uh, I think we saw his first attempt last week, and he has another attempt this week, and looks like. Uh, he had some cloud cover at various parts of the day, but that's still good practice. You can see the curve a little bit and good perseverance despite the clouds. And remember, all you need is for those clouds to break three times in the day. Just a break in the clouds somewhere in the early morning, a break in the clouds somewhere around lunchtime, and a break in the clouds somewhere around evening. So if you do get clouds, I want to encourage you, as you see Asher doing here, don't, don't give up. Go ahead and record data. Uh, even if the weather says it's going to be like overcast all day, just go ahead and try. Uh, you know, and, and it, for the Equinox event, it's important to try and get three days of back-to-back -back data so you see the curve f flipped one way uh, the first day, and then you see the straight line the second day, and you can confirm that the, 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 the line actually flipped to the opposite facing curve on the third day. And so even if you're getting clouds on two out of those three days, like it's good to collect as much data as you can because with the amount of people that will be hopefully collecting data this year, we can, we can use data from other people to help pinpoint uh, w when the sun is actually crossing the center line of heaven, even if you're only able to get one day of data. And uh, yeah, you just never, you never know. I, I've definitely seen and heard testimonies of how the creators will open the heavens, split those clouds, just like uh, he, 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 he um, split the waters for the children of Israel crossing the Red Sea. So it's, it's, and it's really an amazing experience. Like when you need it, it will happen. And it just, it just makes you feel like the creator is, is right there helping you. And he will. And so another good point from this data is the sharp mark. Uh, excellent. Yes, you need sharp mark. Uh, the sharper, the better. And and as you collect, if you need to collect three days of data, um, you'll want to make sure you have a way to differentiate those marks. So this is good. I see timestamps next to these. That's okay. Uh, when you get close to the event and you're going to be collecting three days of data, you want to try and put some kind of distinguishing uh, mark so you know what uh, wh from what day to the next uh, what your data points were for each day. So maybe put like a letter next to each point, like like A would be for the first day, and then the next day you would put like B, and the next day you'd put C next to all your marks so you know which ones are which. Or use different colors, different things you can do. But this is good job, Asher. Keep up the good work. And uh, this is, I guess, where we're at. How many people in the United States and how many people around the, the world. So that's, uh, that's the update for this week. Feel free to join. Check out the Facebook group. Let us know in a comment below this video if you would like to uh, join this effort and uh, 
get out there and practice because uh, it'll be here before we know it. So shalom and may Abba bless you as you continually seek out his truth and love with a pure heart.